Welcome back to another episode. This one, how do you adjust, check, and adjust the valve tolerances on a Euro S50. We're going to show you how you measure and adjust the valve tolerances on a Euro S50. This also applies to the E30 M3, the first and second gen M5, and the first gen M6, 635-633, which all use a very similar valve train. The North American M3s use a hydraulic lifter system. That includes the M50 as well as the 328, 325s and all that. They're all hydraulic lifters. That's the big difference between these two. Those are essentially self-adjusting. So I have to rotate the motor to top dead center. Unfortunately, the timing mark on the crank damper is on the back side, so I transferred to the front, but you can kind of see on the back side of the pulley or the damper, there is a mark, which I've highlighted in white. So the motor's at top dead center, and I can start the next steps. So I'm going to start by rotating the camshafts. They're straight up and down for cylinder number one, and I'll measure the gap or clearance between the bum of the camshaft and the bucket. See the tonsils are. I will do the same thing. I'll move away along one through six on the intake and on the exhaust measure. Take a measurement of all of those clearances and then I will see what the spec is and I will then figure out. Then I'll have to start pulling the shims so I can measure the shims to figure out new shim heights I might need to get the appropriate clearance I require. Already, I have gone through and I have measured and noted down the tolerances. Now what I've got to do is measure the shims. So you have to rotate the buckets. I have to see here. There's a little notch just pointing towards you. I have to rotate this can a little bit more so it's straight up and down so it's fully released the bucket. A bit of compressed air and a magnet. I'm going to pull the shim out of the bucket and measure the thickness. And the thick difference between the thickness of the shim and the tolerance I need is the new shim thickness I need, stack thickness I need. To get the shim out, I need to press the bucket out of the way so I can pull it out. That's where this tool comes in. This tool rocks between the cam and the top of the buckets. That allows me to push down and to press the bucket down out of the way. Go, you can hopefully see there, the bucket's been pushed down and out of the way. So one of the key things you need to do when you are getting ready to remove the shims, once you've depressed the lifters, you want to do is you want to see these little notches here. What these do, these allow the air gun, air blow gun, to get air under the lifter to, to pop it up and then the magnet grabs it. So what you do is you want to make sure you've rotated them and they're, they can just be rotated by finger. I like to rotate them a little bit outboard a little bit so that when I use the lifter, uh, sorry, the tool, it rotates them inwards and they align pretty much perfectly. And now I should be able to, with a magnet and a bit of air, draw the shim out. So you can see on the shim, it's labeled, it's kind of faded a bit, uh, 325. I'm just going to verify that thickness and it measures in at 3246. So that is the thickness is 325. I can now add this to my notes and calculate what the new shim thickness I need to get to my required tolerances. So I have measured the gap or tolerance between the camshaft and the shim bucket, and I have measured the shims. And all I have to do now is do a little bit of math and figure out what way I have to increase the thickness or decrease the thickness in the shims to get me towards my tolerances. I'll look at the existing shims and see what ones need I buy, and then I'll buy them and install them as appropriate, and then measure. So checking valve clearance on this type of motor being a shim under bucket, a shim over bucket, it's quite straightforward. You need a couple things. You need a tool, in this case for these motors, a crank turning tool, which goes over the four crank bolts to allow me to rotate the motor, putting the camshafts into the position I want. You need a set of accurate feeler gauges 
In the case of this motor, the tolerance range is 0.28 to 0.33 on the inlet and exhaust. So what you do is you rotate the crank so that the lobes of the cams are pointing upwards relative to the valves. It's not, not relative to the block, but relative to the valve because the valve is going on an angle. This means that we know where the, the valve is on its base center. It's fully retracted. What you want to do is you want to slip this between the shim and the valve itself, sorry, the cam itself. So I'm going to start the high side at 3.5, and there should be, doesn't fit, so I know it's greater than that. Go to 3.3, which is the top end of its tolerance range. It goes, but there's a lot of drag. Oh, the machine is too tight. So I'm going to go 2.5.4. So that slips through with a little bit of, of resistance. So this sits quite nicely at the high end of the range, but in terms of gap, but right where it needs to be. So I'll just go through each cam at a time, check the tolerances all the way through. New valve shims are in, check the tolerances, they all look good. So we're done with the top end work on this motor. Next steps, I'm an inverter, start working on the bottom end. So if you enjoyed this episode, put it give us the act of doing the wrong. All under the valve shims, all the egg you go fuck fuck ah. Big thanks to you for all for watching and uh, enjoying the Tighten her up, inverter, go to, uh, to the second steps. So thank you very much for all watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you do, please thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. That's it. Next. This slips in, and all you have to do with your fingers is pop, feel it pop into place. There you go. And release the buckets, and we're good to go.